Hello, guys. Why don't you welcome yourselves over here to a very new Wolf Den podcast? I hope you're doing well. It's hot as balls out. Will, how are you oh, doing? yeah. I am doing very good, Bob. In fact, I am quite excited today. I, have quite, I am quite excited. What do you, what you got to be excited about? Well, for, first, let me try to figure out why I'm not centered in. I'm camera. not. Well, no, that's my fault. I'll fix that. Okay. All right. I'm all messed so, up. So, while you hot. fix that, I I am very excited to announce what I hope to be is the first of many a recurring segment on this show. Oh, no. And that is Will corrects Bob's mistakes from last week's Nintendo podcast. This is the oh, part of the show God. where I like to, right at the beginning, just God come in help me. and correct every time uh, Bob says something either incorrect, uh, wrong, <laughs> or just plain dumb on his other podcast podcast the number one video game podcast so on itunes right now well, look, what i do what made, i do you only made one mistake at about oh, good. five minutes in at about five minutes in you said that you nintendo got into the out. games business in the late 70s and that donkey kong and game and watch both came out in the 70s now while it is true that nintendo did start to produce video games in the 70s in particular the color tv games and arcade games such as wild gunman Donkey Kong did not hit arcades until 1981. And in fact, the very first Game & Watch game, Ball, everybody's favorite, came out <laughs> in April of 1980. So the Fuck! Nintendo that we know and love actually got its like got its true beginnings in the 80s. Oh, fucking God this has it. been Will Correct's Bob's Mistakes from last week's Nintendo podcast. You know, when you Google Game & Watch, the f on the right, it says Space Invaders. That is... I, oh, look, I don't have time to do Will Corrects all of Google's mistakes either. <laughs> God damn it, dude. I thought... Okay, so what was the stupid color TV game shit? Was it 79? Uh, 77. Color and TV wild... game. Yeah. God damn. All yeah, right, so you're gonna you say it on every on every Nintendo podcast, right? So I'm, you can I'm fact gonna, check. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch everyone and then embarrass you on this one. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Stupid ass. I thought Donkey Kong was was late seventies. Did they have any no, arcade Don games in the late seventies? Yeah, uh, they were like projector games, like Wild Gunman, where it was like projected onto a it was like a video projected onto a screen, and like you had to shoot with the light gun. Uh, Donkey Kong, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, was built in the hollowed out husks of a game called Radar Scope. Radar Scope came out in 1980, was not very popular in the US, but they had all of these arcade cabinets they needed to fill. So they told Miyamoto, hey, make something. And he made Donkey Kong. Wow. That came out in 1981. Amazing. Incredible. Yes. Yes. I hope you I all learned so something today. You know, on the first, not, on one of the first Nintendo podcasts, I told Wood that uh, uh, cell signals don't go to space. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like I the remember... smart one for a little bit. <laughs> I, I remember that, and it, like it, it sounded smart enough that you had me convinced. I'm like, wait, no, wait they don't. Minute. They don't go to space. Well, they have satellites in space for cell towers to communicate they, they, with. They, no, they have cell, they have cell, special phones that are cellular, but your phone goes to a cell tower, and then that communicates through cables. It doesn't go to space. Okay. I know it's that cables. there are, like, I know there are satellites for cell phones. Yeah. But well, that's well, different from not yours. satellite phones. Not mine. Anyway, tune in next week. Now, we find out okay, what listen. Bob, today we're in this on. podcast. We're supposed to be talking about the. There's a leak of new uh, iterations of the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X, apparently. Um, and then also, a lot of people have been trying to tell me about the Ein Loki and the Ioneo Air, which is two new uh, devices from. Uh, These two little retro. Well, actually. So they're like portable emulators, but they run on Windows. 
And it's from two of the good portable emulator companies. So they're kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Speaking of emulation, there's an update coming to the analog pocket that I actually didn't know about that I'm excited to see. Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. New games and whatnot. Uh, so why don't we first thank some of our subscribers here, our supporters here. Yes. Like uh, J.P. Harrington, thanks for the seven months. George McFarlane, thanks for the hundred bits. Yo, Bob, I thought you might be interested to hear that. The, uh, yeah, the I is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's releasing a Windows handheld in different performance and price versions. There's like a billion different price versions. Uh, Spoopy Girl, thanks for the 14 months. Wolf Bros, Wolf Den Bros Rock, thanks for all the great content. Thank you. I just saw the quarter of my eye in chat. Oh, has the analog pocket been hacked to run ROMs? Uh, not that I know of. Not, I thought you were saying yet. that. It, I thought you were saying it did. I was very excited for a second. Uh, Spoopy Girl X for the three gifted subs. Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the gifted sub. And Smash Bry Man, thank you for the nine months. And Joey Bizzle, thanks for the three months. And Kill Matic, thank you for the seven months. Been eating cereal with my satisfied grip all weekend. Will the promo code cover an emergency room visit? No. Um, you're you're boned there, but uh, are, are you also are you using the grip as a spoon or like as how, the bowl? You need to explain the, yourself. The, the 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 grip is the spoon. Okay, but how would you hurt yourself? It's not. Listen, that's your fault if you hurt yourself. It's not satisfied's fault. <laughs> uh, uh, user beware. You know, don't eat the <laughs> satisfy grip. Yeah. Anyway, they should really put a warning on that. Don't eat this. Don't eat it. Well, so I know yeah. I know the tropical one's pretty colorful. Yes. I just learned that the new Satisfy grip that works with the OLED also works mm-hmm. with the older model. I did not know that. Oh, that's interesting. It, the, the, Considering the, it's like a millimeter bigger. Yeah, the rubber is like thicker, so it just works with both. Interesting. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this new leak of these new consoles that uh, is not happening. <laughs> it's it wasn't. Re- uh, all right, I will read the article. Uh, electronics company TCL attended a conference in Poland, and in a presentation, it said that it expects the PS5 Pro and the new Xbox Series X or S to arrive sometime between 2023 and 2024, according to Polish outlet PPE. Uh, TCL's presentation showed a timeline of consoles starting with the PS4 and Xbox One in 2013 and then the release of the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X a few years later. The presentation also marks the uh, also marks the launch of the ninth generation of consoles with the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S in 2020. At the end of the slide, it lists the PS5 Pro and new Xbox Series X and S. TCL claims that these consoles will provide 60 to 120 frames per second uh, at resolutions of 4K, as well as have the ability to display 8K. Apparently, they will also utilize AMD Radeon RX uh, 7700 XT technology. And here you see the slide where it lists the different gens, and right at the very end, they say that the new Xbox and the PS5 Pro is coming out in 2023, 2024. So, so uh, on. this uh, wait, yeah. Uh, first of all, PS5 doesn't do 1440p. Right. I don't think they've ever released the update for that, but to my knowledge, it doesn't do 1440p. Uh, so right. they're already wrong. <laughs> well, they, the Xbox does. The Xbox Series does. Right. So they, they're, maybe they're just lumping it all together. Maybe they're just wrong. <laughs> maybe they maybe they just don't know when the new consoles are coming out either. That's true, well, too. Who are these people? Why am I to believe them? They're TCL. They're like one of the biggest television companies in the world. They make... All the uh, all those like cheap TVs they can get with really good specs. Oh, those and have, like, guys. Roku built in. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, however, 
This situation is potentially just a guess from TCL, as the pattern for mid-generation refreshes seems to happen about three to four years after the base console launches. The biggest argument against the existence of an upgraded console is the rampant supply issues and chip shortages that are plaguing the current stock of PS5 and Xbox Series uh, systems. Manufacturers are still having trouble meeting demand for launch consoles, which could which could make mid-cycle refreshes both difficult and unneeded at this stage. I don't. So, and that's the that's the article. I don't. So see... basically, what happened was basically what happened was TCL guessed they estimated that we could be seeing a PS5 Pro and a new version of the Xbox Series X or S in 2023-2024 based on what happens last generation. But that's just a that's just their guess and people took it to mean that we're getting new systems in 2 to 3 years. Yeah, I don't this is a it's kind of a wild guess. Like I want to yeah. like we kind of have to you kind of have to be in the room to see what the hell they're trying to get on about here. But uh Yeah. It yeah, it seems like a like a like a wild guess with like a lot of uh uh, detailed specs thrown in for no reason. I, right. well, I get. I guess they're a TV company, so they gotta kind of know what the specs are gonna be. But just 1440p, 120 frames per second. You're not gonna get it, the whatever new PlayStation or Xbox is gonna come out. It's not gonna be any more than that. Just just do that. Well, it's not gonna be any less than that. Because I don't, it would I don't have, think it would. It would I do not think it would be any think, more than that. You don't think the next version of these systems will do more than 4K? No, because it can't barely even do it now. It's the same thing <laughs> as from 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 PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 4 Pro. Like it was 4K, but it it, it still couldn't even couldn't even do it right. Well, that was it like was barely get... 4K. At least yeah. uh, this, these systems, they're full resolution. There's, yeah, they're but not they're not all. The, but the almost... images are 4K. It's yeah, just but, whether or not they run in full 60 frames per second. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and a lot of them are not full 4K. You're, you're, you're getting a, 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 a resolution scaling and stuff. Right. So, there, I mean, there are a decent chunk of games that are 4K 120 frames per second, but um, you're not. I don't think you're going to get any more than that. It, it, whatever iteration they're going to... I don't think we're getting a pro of either of these consoles at all, and I would put money on it. I think that uh, whatever is going to happen next is a, a slimmer, like 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 more optimized, friggin' uh, just mid-cycle iteration, maybe something that's mm -hmm. easier to manufacture that's the same shit. That's as much as I could imagine. Yeah, I, we'll definitely see a PS5 slim and you know hopefully a slimmer xbox series x um yeah i don't know because mid-cycle refreshes of consoles is a new thing we've gotten redesigned models of systems before but like you said it's the same shit the xbox one x and the ps4 pro were brand new concepts when they came out and i don't think those hit you know the sales numbers that microsoft and sony expected them to hit because they were essentially just what people already had, but better. That people would just wait for the the actual next best thing. Yeah, yeah it, it irons out a lot of uh, uh, small flaws that were with right. the original uh, iteration of the console. I think the PlayStation Five needs it the wor the worst because they're they're not keeping up with demand at all, and mm -hmm. uh, it's ugly as all sin. So, so they need to make it not ugly as all sin. Yeah. As, and it's huge. And, and like the Series X is also kind of, it's, it's, I mean, it's like an awkward shape, but the PlayStation 5 is bigger and more awkward. So, uh, something's got to be done about that design like immediately. Yeah. And Xbox, I feel like, needs it less because uh, they have the yeah. Series S, and the Series S is a great, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, middle ground, but uh, yeah, it is a the Series X is pretty well built and 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 pretty optimized as it is, but I wouldn't mind something a little less awkward.
I, like I don't it, yeah. it's like a it's like a tiny mini fridge like like make it more like an, yeah. a a 1x maybe I don't know. Yeah, like a traditional video game system that's like a a regular rectangle, not this like weird square rectangle hybrid. <laughs> exactly. I do like uh what PlayStation did with the uh with the wings that you can get different colored wings now. Like that like the side pads. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still a stupid design no matter what color it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I just like how they're selling the side panels. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy a whole new console. You could just put the side panels on. Right. And uh, you have different colors. I like that. Yeah. But, yeah, there needs to be a new iteration. It'd be cool if they have a new iteration that still has some sort of panels. I'm not saying wings that go off the side, but like the D-brand skins. They have like nice form-fitting uh, uh, panels. Yeah. Uh, why not that? Well, that you can change the colors of. That'd be pretty cool. The reason why the PS5 looks like that and is so big is because it has really bad thermal controls. It gets right. really hot, and that's the best way they could find to, you know, dissipate all that heat. Right. So hopefully, whatever the next revision is fixes that and gets it down to a more manageable size than what it currently is. Right. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah, it, it, it's a lot less awkward if you get rid of the weird curve, you know? Yeah. Um, like, why do I need to stand when I'm holding it horizontally? It's it's just... Yeah. It's just I, think, a, I think that's a sign that it was over-designed. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong here. Um, and yeah, it's another problem is the thermals. Uh, I... They had a good idea with the uh, being able to swap out the NVMe on the inside, which is cool. Uh, yeah. It took them a whole year to allow us to do that, though. So, like, they're yeah. slowly trying to iterate on it through firmware and whatnot, but uh, the whole thing needs a redesign. Uh, the most important reason it needs a redesign is because they're not manufacturing enough of them. They need to make it so they're easier to manufacture for, for themselves. Yeah. Um, I think that will be the next one we see, and we might even see it next year. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're seeing a pro nothing. I think I think that the power that uh, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have uh, is way more than enough for any consumer, and uh, it's way more than enough for developers. I don't think developers can uh, if they if they make it any more powerful. I don't think developers are keeping up. Yeah, and if they do, they probably just like it would be harder for them to develop for. Number one, number two, they would just add so much unnecessary crap to it to justify yeah. the uh, the horsepower. Yeah, so I mean, of course, there's going to be the the oddball developer that's going to be able to utilize all of the stuff, but for the most part, yeah. uh, it's these things are beefy as all hell right now, and and people don't even yeah. have TVs that can support all this shit yet either. So yeah, and that's a, that's another thing because they may it used to be just plug it into your TV and that's it. But now you know, does it go up to the right uh, frame rate? Does it support all the resolutions? Does it have variable refresh rate? Does it have uh, HDR? Does it have this? Does it have that? Like the average person is not going to get to use all the features of a supposed PS of the PS5, let alone the PS5 Pro. It is super annoying to to try to get. A display that could utilize all of the features yeah. of a device uh, these days, even outside of the new consoles. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense why a company like TCL would have this in a conference because they want to be able to be on the forefront of whatever these companies are releasing. So. Yeah. Also, it would. I don't think it would behoove uh, Sony to even talk to any TV manufacturers because they make TVs. So, like, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna make they're... the PlayStation Five ready TVs. They don't need any other manufacturer to be on board with right. that sort of stuff. Yeah, but at the very least, these companies should just be making TVs that work with the new consoles. They don't have to worry too much about what's over the horizon. But I guess, I mean, that's just how technology works. It's kind of their job to to worry about that stuff. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, when I'm looking at for a TV, I uh, usually I don't want a lot of bells and whistles. Now I'm now I'm looking because I want it to work with all these new consoles because I feel yeah. obligated to. But for the most part, 
I don't really want a smart TV. I don't want the... I don't Bless want you. the like HDMI to like turn the TV on when I turn the console on. That gets annoying really quick. Yeah, um, that gets that that gets annoying when I turn my Xbox off and the TV goes off. Because sometimes I don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah, that's super annoying. I want to be able yeah. to control that stuff. Um, or changing the input. Sometimes that's cool. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. So yeah, uh, I just I just want a TV with more than three HDMI inputs. <laughs> Because that's another thing, friggin' HDMI hubs and switchers, like that those are those can get very expensive and very complicated, and they don't support all of the new features that your video game system requires. Yeah. Yeah. HDMI hubs, I still don't think they make two point one hubs. I haven't heard anything. No. It's been a long time. I don't even but... think they make two point oh hubs. If they do, I can't find any. No, they do. I have one. I, I have a two point oh hub. So sure. do I, but it doesn't work with my Xbox for some reason. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I also have everything here running through a capture card, and that's a whole nother problem because yeah. capture cards don't do 2.1 and stuff like that. Chat's telling me I can turn those features off. I know I can turn the features off. You ever go into a menu on a TV? It sucks. And you know what's worse than yeah. that? Menu on a monitor. Menus on a monitor oh, are fucking yeah. horrible. Oh, hey, Will, thanks for the subscription. <laughs> No problem. Um, it's called DHCP. No, we none of us talked about DHCP just now. H H D C P. He corrected himself. Yeah, I I'm dyslexic and I knew what you meant. H D C. None of us are talking about H D C P. That's that's I'm, completely different. Well, that's different. part of it because that 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 causes a lot of problems with connecting to your devices to things, even mm -hmm. hubs and switches. So. That DHCP might be, is for routers. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, that might be something to do with it, but, but something to do still, with like, what? TVs? No, no. TVs? It, it's because you could turn it off. You could turn HDCP off. But even and it, and it still, still has like, fucking problems. That's a capture TVs card have, thing. And it's a... TVs have different names for everything. That's like, true too. My down, my downstairs Samsung uh, HDR is not. HDR. You have to go to like ultra color to get like the actual HDR 10 settings. My my LG up here is like I think Smart Vision. It's not called HDR. And then motion smoothing, which you should all turn off. Make sure it's turned off is different on every television. You know, it, it's ridiculous. Travel says you mirrored yourself, you son of a bitch. Which one? Wolf, Wolf Den. Suck it. I'm not mirrored. <laughs> Suck it. I think it's weird. I see some streamers mirror their webcam. I think it's weird because it's like, why do you have to see your, why do you want everybody else to see you the way you see yourself? That feels weird. Yeah. Maybe it's so that they can easily like, I don't know, like a weatherman, like they could like point at easily stuff. Easily point things. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But that would get on my nerves because a little inside into my mind, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see the Superman logo on a picture of Superman and it's backwards. <laughs> That's like Wait. such a lazy flip. No, like you couldn't just You know like when you see a picture of Superman? Yeah. And like he's got the, the yeah, symbol yeah, yeah. on his chest. It bothers me so much when I see a picture of Superman and the symbol is backwards. <laughs> and this why would it be like that? Because somebody took it and instead of like, and for some reason, like they flipped it. So I guess so his cape flows one way or the other, oh, but okay. the symbol remains the same. Do they do that in official work or is it just some? No, it's like... usually just like, you know, when you're scrolling through pictures on the internet, I've seen it on like articles, news articles and stuff. Right. That's yeah. Or like that's dumb. Know, blog posts and stuff. Yeah. That bothers. That really bothers me. Anyway. Oh, Epos Vox has a video about two capture cards that support 120 frames per second pass through with 4K. I need to know that because I want that immediately because that really pisses me off. I, I, I yeah. really, I've been looking for that. And, and they keep announcing, cat like Elgato and Aver Media keep announcing capture cards and none of them have HDMI 2.1. Or really? I'm sorry, none of them have uh, 4K 120 pass through. I'm not trying to record 4K 120. I'm just trying to see it with my own eyeballs. Right. Also, I just got a laptop. 
for an upcoming thing that does 360 hertz. <laughs> so, remember when we didn't care about frame rates? Well, well now, now we're going down the rabbit hole of frame rates. When you when somebody just gives you a laptop that's sure. 300 frames per second. I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah, so we're talking about TVs and stuff because uh, a TV company potentially leaked the PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series X, but uh, I don't think they I'm did. I think they're just with, guessing. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with they hypothesize when they could, when they we could see potentially see those systems based on previous data, yeah. and everybody, of course, took that to mean that's when we're getting it, you know. But it's data from one point in history not from the entire history of video games so i think it was it was a good effort but faulty logic yeah it like we i mean look I, like we try to read the tea leaves based on what happened in the past because uh you know we can look in we can look at game history and see when companies usually release stuff like how long between console cycles uh there usually is like like we can kind of yeah. guess what's going to happen next but uh it's different all of, every generation's different uh yeah. and right now we have weird chip shortages we had a pandemic and all that stuff and that's all going to factor into when the next console is going to come out so and what the next yeah. console is going to be some people say the uh nintendo switch pro didn't happen because of the chip shortages uh I just think it wasn't going to happen anyway. But uh, I, th I think that the OLED might have had some more stuff going on if there weren't chip shortages. I just don't know about how pro it would have been. Um, but yeah, we, we, we don't really know. I think the best guess we can make is that there's going to be some weird iteration next year, but I don't think it's going to be uh, anything you should throw your PlayStation 5s out for, you know? Yeah. Anyway uh did you just put this here i thought i moved this most played games what? of 2020 no that's been there uh i'm gonna move it because i want to talk I am about gonna, some other stuff i'm gonna put a uh a new article in the keep that i forgot to add before okay well while you do that i'm gonna that. thank some people okay. uh i forgot where we left off uh joey bizzle kill oh i read that one Migs luna thank you for the 21 months mecha dragon thanks for 11 months i hope they don't release a pro model to be honest i was lucky enough to get a ps5 over the weekend like i said before it's not if they do anything it's not going to be anything to throw your ps5 out for yeah uh robbie sorio thank you for the prime you know it might be worth well i mean playstation has the the discless one that's a hundred dollars cheaper but it might be worth it for them to just yeah. make a 1440p console that's like 300 bucks yeah uh circa x thanks for the nine months almost forgot where to go almost forgot my prime sub love me some wolf bros thanks circa i appreciate it yeah uh will wolf damn it wow thanks for the 10 months only 10 months <laughs> oh no 29. really looking forward to that reoccurring segment <laughs> 29 months total uh I probably Jin, skipped a month. <laughs> Jin Jukebox, thanks for the 17 months. Good evening, Wolf Bros. And Fadud Dud, thank you for the 19 months. Oh, and Cull Varks gave us a bit. So, hey, Bob, I hope your day's been good so far. Keep up the awesome videos. Thanks, dude. Um, all right. Uh, this could have been a whole topic, a main topic, but we should talk about there's, there's going to be new stuff from ein who made the odin and new stuff from aya who made the neo it's very confusing they they need to come together and agree to change their names to something <laughs> radically different i wonder if they're secretly affiliated because it's a little <laughs> suspicious that their names are so similar and also that they're releasing similar stuff like right at the same time yeah so Let's get things straight here. Ein yes. is the company that makes the Norse god uh, 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 named stuff. They made yes. a, uh, 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 an Android emulation device called the uh, Ein Odin. 
which I have a video yes. on and would just release a video on today. Um, now they're making the Loki. This is from Retro Dodo, the world's most affordable Windows handheld. Uh, this is direct competition with the Steam Deck. While many yeah. of you may be waiting for Ein to finally ship your Odin, <laughs> that's true, uh, after waiting many months and constantly being teased by their weekly production updates, you'll be glad to know that they are launching ha another handheld. To our surprise, Ein have officially teased their next handheld and have named it Loki, along with a tease stating it's the world's most affordable Windows handheld. Not only are they doing this to annoy Anbernick after their Windows 600 announcement. I didn't even see this. Oh, I did see this. This oh, looks wow. like shit. I don't think this is going to be good. <laughs> um, I feel like they're specifically aimed to take a piece of Aya Neo's pie, especially after their reveal of the Aya Neo Air recently. Uh, obviously, they'll be looking the other to... other article you have. Uh, yeah. Obviously, they'll be looking to target the Steam Deck too, but I personally feel the Steam Deck is going to be a totally different demographic. Okay. The Ein Loki is going to be affordable, in quotes, which could mean anywhere between $100 and $500. They do have pricing already. But looking at Ein's pet... Okay, we, we have pricing now. Uh, oh, it's right there. Ein Loki pricing. Uh, you got the Mini which is probably going to be underpowered. $300 for a Windows handheld? $300 is pretty insane. It's got an Alder okay. Lake U processor, which is probably not that good. Uh, what else? Uh, we have the we have the regular Loki. F there's a list well, five got different three devices versions. here. Yeah, there's, there's you go. There's ahead. the Loki. Yeah, okay. There's the Loki Mini, which Bob was just talking about with the Alder Lake CPU and 64 gigs of storage. There's three different versions of the main Loki. All three have an AMD 6600U processor with 64, 526, and uh, sorry, 256 and 512 gigs, respectively. Um, you know, each going up in price. And then there's the Loki Max with an AMD 6800U processor and 512 gigs of storage. Yeah, so it goes from $300 all the way up to $800, depending on what you want. Uh, so you can get really anything you want here. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm running out of storage on my computer, so I need to delete stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have an old podcast? No, we have this, though. I can get rid of this. Beep. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I mean, I don't know what... I don't I don't know what to... Do. So, apparently, I think these are going up for pre-order tomorrow? Unless I have my wires crossed, because right. Aya Neo sounds exactly the same. Um... This thing looks just like the Ein Odin, pretty much. It looks almost exactly the same, which is great because I love the Ein Odin. Um, but instead of Android, it's running Windows. Uh, I'd love to give it a shot. I doubt it's going to play anything too powerful. I'm not paying $800 for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> chat, maybe I should make a poll. How many polls could I do? Uh we're going to do a poll right now because I want to know what you would pay for something like this. New poll. Oh, I could do I could do all five. Which Ein uh, Loki would you get? I don't uh, think it said when it's going up for pre-order. I might have my wires crossed then. I'm going to do it by price. So we got two ninety nine. We got four ninety nine. We got five ninety nine. We have six ninety nine, and we have seven ninety nine. Start poll. All right, voting that to help me choose which one to get because I don't want to get the maxed out one. That's eight hundred bucks. That's not a good Steam Deck competition. So 
they say in this article yeah. it's not Steam Deck t- competition. It totally is. They totally, this is totally yeah. an answer. I mean, so there's been other portable Windows tablets in the past, but they are over a thousand dollars. Aya, the Aya Neo was fourteen hundred dollars, um, and the Steam Deck is like just as good and a thousand dollars cheaper. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say this is competing with the steam deck also you could just put steam os on stuff like this uh which i think that they might have been trying to do but i don't know why they don't just ship it like that um i don't know i don't really know what the deal is uh also why the three middle ones oh it's the size okay yeah yeah Okay, maybe I will just get the 499 one then. It's only got 64 gigabytes, but uh, slap an SD card in there. I, I I've seen yeah. that it's really not a so SD cards obviously aren't as quick as the internal storage, but I've seen that the inter, it, it really the speed difference isn't a big deal. Uh, most of the games are going to run yeah. just fine running off of a micro SD. So I guess the 499 one might be the way to go. But then for hundred dollars. So more, you according get to the the Eintech website, uh, the Eintech.com store, the Loki goes on pre-sale tomorrow oh, at nine p.m. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna need to do that. So which one should I get, guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, sixty-four gigabytes is not enough. So you would have to shove something in there. I mean, I guess maybe the middle one. Yeah. I guess five, but five ninety nine is so much. I think four ninety nine is like the it, most I'm willing to pay for something like this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I but, don't know, man. But I also need to know what these people would be interested in because three hundred dollars for a Windows tablet is pretty good. Yeah, but I just feel like I mean, these devices are so niche and specialty like because for less than three hundred dollars now you can just get a switch and play all the games you would want to play you yeah. know you're you're not going to get like you know the top of the line games you know you're the big triple a games to be honest those aren't probably aren't going to run all that well on this anyway true i mean even even if you you spring for the max the, the 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 games i'm most interested in on a device like so like the steam deck i love it but my biggest gripe was that games like Fortnite, uh warzone and valorant games the pc games i'm most interested in uh aren't gonna run good or or can't run or are paying the ass to get to work on there um so something like my aya neo fix that it was easy to run those games uh so having a windows device like this would make it easier to run games like that so i'm excited for something like right. this but i don't think the three hundred dollar one with the Alder Lake, I don't think that one's gonna run Warzone or Valorant or anything. So I, I, I not. or like be able to hook it up to an external display. I don't see that working good. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I I am interested to see how much I can push that three hundred dollar one, but then I would have to get the three hundred dollar one and the the five hundred dollar one so i don't know it doesn't seem worth it i mean so the cheapest steam deck is four hundred dollars for five hundred dollars you can get a windows tablet which is pretty good i think i think that's i think it's reasonable to spend another hundred dollars to get windows they have one that undercuts the steam deck and is probably way less powerful and they have one that is more expensive but at least it has windows um what's the what's the poll app? Oh just, Treble I also gifted it. a billion subs. <laughs> Thank you, Treble, for supporting the number twenty something gaming podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh view results. 500 bucks i think i i think i uh skewed the poll a little bit by talking about the, yeah how by I was saying that's the one that. you wanted yeah. yeah 
But a lot of uh, this runner up is the three hundred dollar one. Maybe I can convince somebody else okay. to to get the three hundred dollar one and let me use it. I don't want to get both. Yeah. Maybe I have to get both. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yes. Yeah. I was gonna say you could probably justify getting the 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 base model, the mini, and I mean even though the fans want you to get the the five hundred dollar one, you could justify getting the three hundred dollar one by seeing if you know what that can run, and if you do in fact do need the extra horsepower um, of the, the higher end models to play anything. That's the thing. I would need to compare it against the more expensive model. Well, you have a Steam Deck that you can uh -huh. compare it to because the Steam Deck can play pretty much anything you throw at it with a few exceptions. If this thing can't play certain games that the Steam Deck can play, I think that's a pretty good point of comparison, don't you? I mean, it is kind this of... this is supposed to be yeah. like an affordable Windows machine, like a Steam Deck competitor, and its base model can't compare with the Steam Deck... It, it is a better video to be able to say the cheaper Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> the cheaper Steam Deck that also runs Windows. But also, here's another here's another little problem. Uh Ein the Odin came out and they didn't sh they barely shipped it to anybody. Uh right. the light version of the Ein Odin still hasn't shipped yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the mini version probably isn't going to ship for a long time. I yeah. might have to get both. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. all right. Well, and then I'll be sure not to tell mom because she'll just be mad at you. And then on top of that, Will, it's not over. Because I'm also going to have to get the Ioneo Air. <laughs> so this, this is on... Uh, this is from a while ago. This is a very pretty looking device. Uh, but uh, here we have a better uh, article from Tom's Hardware. $289. Not to be outdone. Yeah. Aya is coming in hot. Undercutting. Yeah. Undercutting your competitor $10 at a time. $289 Steam Deck alternative. Aya Neo Air Plus. Aya Neo Air. I a Neo Air Plus. These people need to change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, powered by a Mendocino APU. God. Oh, boy. A portable handheld PC to use as a Switch-like games machine is a wonderful idea. We're surprised we haven't seen more of recently. Oh, I've seen plenty of it. And this yeah. one, which comes to us from the pages of Tech Power Up and Lil Putting, uh, looks rather interesting. As well as undercutting the Steam Deck on price, it's called the Air Plus and comes from Aya Neo. Is Aya Neo the company or is Aya the company? I thought Aya Neo was the company. I thought Aya was the company. Wait, I think Aya is a company, and they have an older one, but now they changed it to Aya Neo. Oh god! Because they have like that. two websites. <laughs> yeah. All right, whatever. Um, so I guess it's Aya Neo now. That's the company. Um, yeah. Inside, you'll find one of AMD's new Me Mendocino APUs, which are a fusion of Zen 2 and RDNA 2, designed for thin and light laptops and produced on TMSC's 6 nanometer manufacturing process. You writing all that down, Will? This combo is the oh, yeah. same as the custom Arith processor in the Steam Deck, but in different proportions. While Aerith has eight GPU cores, Mendi M Mendocino may have as few as two. Well, that sucks. At least for yeah. the four CPU cores can match the Steam Deck's chip numbers. That doesn't sound as good then. Um, yeah. <laughs> being a mainstream part rather than a custom design means that the Mendi... Men <laughs> The processor APUs could <laughs> give Ioneo a way to undercut the Steam Deck on pricing and be offering its own Linux-based Ioneo OS alongside the, poss the possibility of running Windows or Steam OS 
it can save money on licensing fees. That's another thing I didn't consider. These things have to ship with Windows. <laughs> yeah. You Which can't means just, they have to pay Microsoft. They can't just expect you to put a... Uh, 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 they can't just expect you to put a license on there. Yeah. Mendo Chino. Mendo Chino. Is, is this is this this is Italian, isn't it? Mendo Chino. Mendo uh, Chino. Mom. Help. It's uh, uh from California. Oh, that's why I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Mendocino is a coastal community in Northern California. It's known for the cliffside trails and beaches of Mendocino Headlands State Park. They, they're they coming after Apple with that. That's an Apple thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we currently know very little about the handheld. Indeed, the APUs themselves were only just recently announced at Computex, but a 6-inch 1080p OLED screen. That's crazy. And a removable yeah. M.2 2280 SSD have been mooted alongside a micro SD card reader, but the amount of RAM included is a mystery. It's clearly too soon to start making comparisons with the Steam Deck, which is already shipping, but there but that's not going to stop anybody. The Me Mendo Chino silicon is expected to ship in the fourth quarter of this year. However, so However, so Ioneo has plenty of time to flesh out details. Looks wise, it's a Wii U-esque white <laughs> rectangle with analog sticks and Xbox style face buttons. There's a D-pad on the left along with what could be a volume rocker and start and select buttons on the right. We haven't seen the top edge of the casting of the casing, so can't speculate on USB or HDMI placement. I mean, they Retro Dodo has it right here. It has a USB-C on the top as volume rocker. It has the uh, the fingerprint reader that doesn't fucking work at all from the Ion Neo <laughs> Next and a giant yeah. fan on the top. Uh, I don't know what the bottom looks like, though. All we got is the top. And I kind of like the grip bumps. It's got those, like, grip bumps. I kind of like it. Yeah. Um, and what else? Possibly the best news about the Air Plus in it is its price, which manages to undercut the Steam Deck by starting its pricing at just $289. Whether this price reflects an underpowered entry-level model is, is, along with the release date for the handheld, another item we're waiting for confirmation. Uh, I Didn't they release... Didn't they release some shit? Don't, don't we know more about it? Like the pricing structure? Uh, or the Air... No. Yeah, I, th I thought they had a. I thought they didn't they tweet some shit. Oh, I don't know. Neither of these articles have release date or price. Sorry, the one has price. Neither of them have release dates. So there's a. There's also an Air Pro Ultimate Performance Dream Machine, and it looks like it has their own okay. proprietary. It's upside down. Oh, no, it's not. That's right side up. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, it looks like it has their own proprietary skin on it that looks kind of like a Switch UI. Yeah. I'm curious. So they have, they have like a UI on the Windows Eye on Neo Next, and it, it kind of sucks. I'm not down with it. It kind of, kind of breaks some shit. Um, but I guess right. that's Windows for you. Here it is. Ion Neo. Here it is. Ion Neo Air Youth Edition. God. <laughs> Enough with that. That is that is the a choice of a name, let me tell you. It is $550. So what the fuck are we talking about here? The Ion Neo Air Regular Roll is $629. And the and you can get more storage if you want for barely any more money. That's actually a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, six fifty for twice the storage. Uh, so where's the cheap one then? Oh, this yeah. is a sick. Cut. You can get a yellow one. That's pretty cool. Ooh, That's pretty cool. unless maybe Tom's hardware was mistaken, but no, it says Ion Neo Plus. 
Ioneo Air Plus announced. Yeah, I think that article's from before. They've been re- they've been trickling out information like every day. This article's from a day ago. Oh, was this? This was from the twenty eighth. Oh, so then yeah, Tom's hardware is wrong. They just missed it. Yeah, but wait, but but the Tom's hardware article. Oh yeah, regular Ioneo Air. So why does that say two eighty nine? They, they straight up are saying that it's more money than like a lot more money than that, like yeah. a lot more, like double the price. <laughs> 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 also of note, uh, the world's first small hall sensing joystick. So the thumbsticks uh, are going to be hall sensing, so they won't have the same sort of rub that a Joy-Con thumbstick has. So you won't get the drift supposedly Mm -hmm. uh i believe that they work with gully kit so the hall sensing sticks that are in that gully kit controller that i talked about i'm pretty sure it's the same technology that's in this i i'm pretty sure they license it from gully kit uh hall sensing just means magnets uh, they they use magnets yeah i'm just looking on the ineo like website and they don't have anything on air yet so uh, on the 28th, they just dumped a bunch of tweets. Okay. There are only two screws in the fuselage. Okay, that's so it's going to be a pain in the ass to open. Oh, there's the bottom. SD card reader, uh, headphone jack, and USB-C. That's it. Pretty, pretty typical. And we have specs. 1080p, OLED, AMOLED. That's the same, right? Okay. Um, it's different. It's different. How how different? I don't well, know. I just know it's different. Professional primary color OLED screen. I think AMOLED is just a cheaper OLED. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just more expensive. I'm pretty sure that there is no cheaper version, and that Tom's hardware is just wrong there. Yeah. Maybe they saw it in in a different type of currency. AMOLED is. Uh, AMOLED display technology is much better than OLED as it contains an additional layer of TFTs and follows a backplane technology. Uh, AMOLED displays are much more flexible when compared to OLED displays. Hence, they are much more costly than OLED displays. Oh, so it's technically better. <laughs> yes. Also, this is unrelated, but Aya Neo is making the two. They're upgrading the, the, the thing they already have, and it looks disgusting look at this look at this <laughs> it looks terrible that's ugly as all sin and it's another windows handheld it's probably going to be a lot of money yeah uh so there you go i guess the aya neo is more money but that makes sense because they're i guess more premium and more powerful than whatever ein makes the, yes. the, the Loki and the Odin, they're usually going to be cheaper and more underpowered. But usually, I, I kind of like I, I like that for emulation. I like what they have for emulation. Uh, as far as Windows, uh, it looks like this might be more powerful and a little better, but I don't think it'll be undercutting the Steam Deck. I, I think that that's wrong. I think that the, o, the, the, the Loki, the Ein Loki, is going to undercut the Steam Deck. It just might not be anywhere near as powerful. So I thought that was exciting. We got some more handholds coming out that could compete with the uh, with the Steam Deck. If you don't feel like getting a Steam Deck yeah. or you want to play more Windows games or you want to do more emulation stuff, you have a lot more options coming out. It's just you want to get in on the ground floor because uh, shipping takes fucking forever and they f- constantly iterate on this stuff. So there's always a new one coming out. Right. Anyway. Again. I'll thank Travel for the one billion gifted subs for being our our sponsor today. Um. All right. What's next? All right. I I just added this, and it's uh, we were talking before about console redesigns. Uh, mm-hmm. and I know I think it was last week or a week ago we talked about Xbox is planning on making a streaming stick. Yeah. Um, well, now Microsoft is rethinking its a streaming stick plan. Oh, like they're like they don't want to do it. Uh, 
According to the article, Xbox confirmed that it is still developing a low-cost streaming stick designed to bring Game Pass to the masses by cutting out the console. However, the company appears to have hit a snag with the most recent underdeveloped hardware and is now pivoting uh, to a new approach. An X-Class streaming device was first announced in June 2021 alongside plans to bring no hardware required Xbox Game Pass app to support its TVs. The company has previously teased an Xbox streaming stick, stating a device you could plug into a TV or monitor could stream games was under development. More recently, a product codenamed Keystone appeared in an Xbox OS list. In a statement oh. to Windows Central, Microsoft spokesperson reiterated Xbox's intentions of releasing a cloud gaming dongle, but admitted that the concept under development needs to be scrapped. Our vision for Xbox Cloud Gaming is unwavering. Our, our goal is to enable people to play the games they want on the device they want, anywhere they want. As announced last year, we've been working on game streaming device codenamed Keystone that could be connected to any TV or monitor without the need for a console. As part as part of any techno te sorry. As part of any technical journey, we are constantly evaluating our efforts, reviewing our learnings, and ensuring uh, ensuring we we are bringing value to our customers. We have made the decision to pivot away from the current iteration of the Keystone device. Uh, we will take we will take our learnings and refocus our efforts on a new approach that will allow us to deliver Xbox Cloud Gaming to more players around the world in the future. We don't know much about the streaming stick. Uh, apart from its goal to lower the barrier to entry to, uh, to access to Xbox Cloud Gaming, which includes hundreds of games through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, along with TV shows, movies, and other media. It could take the form of a Roku streaming stick, or it might be a larger box with an Ethernet port and USB connections. Early leaks show a mini hub with Ethernet, USB, and HDMI ports, and an appearance similar to the Xbox Series S. Whatever the case, the device isn't arriving anytime soon, uh, while stock is slowly moving closer to demand, buying the latest Xbox consoles at retail price remains a challenge. Even if you can stag one, it'll cost you a minimum of $300 for the Series S and $500 for the Series X. A low-cost streaming stick could benefit both uh, consumers and Xbox, giving the former a cheap way to experience modern gaming while giving the latter a steady stream of income via subscriptions. It's certainly interesting to see how all of this plays out, uh, especially since Xbox intends on bringing cloud gaming to select TVs, uh, removing the need for additional hardware altogether. The last thing we heard about stream about the streaming stick was that it could arrive within the next 12 months. Uh, don't hold your breath, however. After all, Xbox chief Phil Spencer said in November of 2020 that we'd, we'd see an Xbox app on TVs within 12 months, and that he doesn't think... Anything is going to stop us from doing that. We're here in 2022, still frantically clicking refresh on retailer websites for a chance to spend big money on a console. Uh, so they scrapped the stick idea. Yes, they're, they scrapped it as it exists right now, and they're going back to the drawing board. So it sounds like they still want to do a streaming device, a streaming-only mm -hmm. device, but I guess their initial plan for like a, a stick or a box is gone interesting uh i would assume that microsoft sees a lot of success with uh game pass and all of the remote apps that they have they're probably seeing success on that on other devices like on tv and 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 uh, like like on tvs and on it, on the computer through chrome and whatever so yeah. Maybe they don't see a market right now for the stick. Maybe they want to focus on people buying actual Xboxes. Maybe they have another type of Xbox type of device that they want to work on or, or, or maybe like an Apple TV type thing instead of a stick type thing. Or maybe yeah. they just maybe it just sucked and they just want to want to make a whole new thing. Yeah, I, I think that coming out. I mean, a stick is usually, like, compare, like, a Roku stick to an Apple TV, like, a Roku stick or a Fire Stick are incredibly underpowered. And yeah. they, all they can really do is stream movies, and that's it. And even that, they don't really do particularly well. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, an Apple TV or, like, the Fire, uh, the Amazon Fire Box, and I think Roku even makes, like, actual set-top boxes, those are significantly more powerful, 
and you have to have Ethernet ports that you can directly connect to the internet with. Something like that would probably be uh, the direction Microsoft should take rather than a stick, although sticks are very popular. I think it would behoove Microsoft to invest in something like this, and even Sony with their relaunch of uh, PlayStation Plus, to invest in some sort of low-end streaming device, because we still live in a world where people think if you want to play Xbox games, you need an Xbox-branded device to do so, not right. knowing you can do it from your phone or your computer. So it, it would make sense for them to get on, in on it rather than just like farming out to like uh, TV manufacturers and set-top box makers to handle. But Yeah, I, I would imagine that they'd want to... Uh, be on the forefront before they give it to TV manufacturers because TV. Ma I could imagine that the app on TVs is going to run like garbage. So uh, yeah, having an actual device that they know is going to run great, uh, I feel like is really important. Uh, but it must. They must have seen a problem. They must have seen a problem. Yeah. Like I'm sure that they definitely still want to do it, but there's something in the way that they have to. They have to fix. Um, yeah. So I guess I, I I guess we'll still see it. We'll still, I mean, of course they're still yeah. gung ho about streaming, but uh, I guess uh, I guess there we, we won't see the the little stick for a while. Um. Anyway, I want to point out somebody in the chat. Malakit said, uh, "The Aya Neo Air, Air Plus, and Air Pro are all different consoles with different price points." Um. Plus, for some reason, being the cheapest. Uh, Aya is notorious, or Aya Neo is notorious for having just absolutely horrible names for things that are incredibly confusing, uh, and a million different versions of all this shit. Uh, yeah. this, this website, Notebook Check, Aya Neo has announced that it intends to sell the Aya Neo Air and Aya Neo Air Pro available with up to the rise and whatever. The Aya Neo Air series will start at $500. So I don't, I Jeez. I honestly don't know where the information of the of the plus being the cheapest or like where the show me the price where the price is for the plus. Is that what Retro Dodo was originally talking about? Or no, that was Tom's hardware. I Neo Air Plus is what Retro Dodo is talking about from a day ago. Yeah. I don't know, it's incredibly fucking confusing. Uh, yeah, this article leaves out Air Plus. So I guess the Plus was announced yesterday and it's going to be the cheapest? That's so fucking annoying. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Travel now gifted 104 subs. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Thanks, Travel. So, Will, I don't know if you know this, but you see the number of on the bottom left corner? It's the number of subs. Next to it, it says yeah. out of 750. Do you know why? Uh -huh. Do you know why it says out of 750? Uh, why does it say out of 750? Because I told myself if I could keep 750 until mm -hmm. I move in November, I will buy myself a Lamar Zoco espresso machine. Oh, yes, of course. The Yes. The coffee machine that we saw in an episode of Ted Lasso and my wife goes, that looks like the coffee machine your brother would buy. And I did a double take and I said that is the coffee machine he wants to buy <laughs> yes so uh he's he's directly supporting my my addiction so thank you for that trouble um so yeah I'm going to buy an espresso machine anyway, even if that number is, <laughs> doesn't doesn't maintain that. But it would be nice to know that uh, Twitch paid for it and I didn't, uh, you know, uh, it, you know, it's just it's just an excuse to tell mom that I didn't waste my own money. You know, I wasted other people's money. I I think that money would be better served because you already have a th something to make coffee, and something to make espresso. I think you need to. I can do it better, though. You need to get something that'll really change the way that you eat food. I mean, I'm going to fucking kill you. Hannah's moving in with me. She has an air fryer. I will I will be getting an air fryer. 
But that's so far away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting one now, and then I'm gonna have to throw it out. <laughs> you don't throw it out. You have two air fryers, one for one thing and one for another thing. I would like it a happens rice cooker. all the time. No, I just threw out my rice cooker because it had mold in it. I used it once five years ago, and I threw it out. Oh my god, I would have cleaned it. Don't, those things are. You know what's great? You know what's great? You buy the minute rice. And you literally you boil that. water, it's you stick it in there, you leave it for five It's minutes. honestly yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's the difference between minute rice and rice rice? Honestly, can you just, don't know. Can you just use rice rice the minute, same way you would use minute rice? Minute rice has the instructions on the back of the packaging, so I follow that. <laughs> yeah. And so, rice rice doesn't. Rice rice doesn't have instructions. So how am I supposed to know to use yeah. two cups of water? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, Luibic says, run akimbo air fryers. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, the entire chat right now is subscribers. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right. More, more news stories. Uh, yes. We have to talk about this analog pocket update because I didn't know about it and I want to know about it. Maybe I'll pick up my, my friggin' analog pocket finally. <laughs> analog pockets, long awaited. 1.1 update will finally be arriving in July, uh, at, as analog announced in a blog post on Friday. Analog pocket OS 1.1 release, uh, the, the Analog Pocket one, OS 1.1 release will include beta versions of the library, memories, and FPGA development features, according to the blog post. You can read more about those first two features from our article in October. The library will be a huge historical archive about retro games, while memories will let you capture and load save states as well as capture screenshots. It seems like the development feature will allow developers to take advantage of the analog second FPGA chip, the field programmable, field programmable gate array. Pocket is designed to be as easy as possible to develop and port FPGA cores to. Analog says on its website, we added a second dedicated FPGA just for developers to develop and port their own cores. Developers will be able to interface with analog OS, library, memories, and tools. Uh, and pocket hardware, IOs, and scalers. At the time of the retro handhelds December launch, Analog told Polygon that the update would be arriving in January, but now the company is saying a beta of the update is set to arrive six months later. It's not clear uh, what, the, what the holdup has been or when Analog expects to bring 1.1 out of beta. Analog CEO and fan founder Christopher Tabor didn't immediately reply to requests for clarification. Even without the features arriving with uh, version 1.1, the analog pocket is still an impressive device. And uh, Andrew Weber of Andrew Webster of The Verge says the pocket breathes new life into old games by showing them in their best, in their very best. Uh, if you don't already have one, you might be waiting a while. The next set of pre-orders, Group B, is scheduled to arrive in Q4. And if you pre-order the pocket right now, you won't get it until sometime in 2023. Uh. All right, I'm less excited. <laughs> the library <laughs> well, and memories features. Oh no, memories is important. Never mind. Memories is very important. Yeah. Library, not a big deal. It's because it's not an actual library of games. It's kind of like because you need the you need the cartridge. So like you need, you need the game to play it. Yeah. But I think it'll give you inform like library is supposed to give you information on the game, like box art, uh, viewer release, okay. number of players, synopsis, whatnot. I think you will have access to library whether or not you own the game. Like you'll see the information for the game, yeah. But you know you won't be able to play it unless you own it. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, what? what who cares? Yeah. I have the internet. Well, I can make a list on the internet. Well, why do I need that well, analog pocket? Okay. Well. I think that it could come into play with the big announcement, which was opening up the development features of the second FPGA chip in the analog, because that I think is what you've been waiting for. It finally being opened up for people to put their own cores, i.e. emulators onto the device. Uh, I didn't know that was locked. So, 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 yeah. so, but uh, hold on. Opening up the second FPGA opens it up to uh, have emulators on there, 
But it doesn't necessarily mean ROMs yet. True. Unless, unless somebody develops a whole... Yeah, people would have to develop... I guess, yeah, you know what? I guess people would just develop emulators for it, and they would develop a friggin' yeah. Game Boy emulator, and then you would just be able to dump ROMs, but... Right. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully you'd be able to pull them from the SD card. I don't see why not. Okay, okay, that, okay, yeah, that I mean, might work. If, it might work out. If Again, if they're opening it up for people to program with, like, mm. people will find a way to do it. Yeah. Like, that's just how it works. Because right, because right now you can, but it's through GB Studio, which is pretty locked. It like you, yeah, like you would have to. If you want to put a Game Boy game on the analog pocket, you need to, you need to export it using GB Studio. <laughs> yeah. Um. So when is when is that? When are when's those cores? When are we doing that? Uh, they haven't said. It just said that uh, arriving in July. Okay. All right. All right, I'm down. Sometime soon-ish. Okay. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, Memories is great because it lets you do save states, which we can't do right now. Yes. So. No, you're at the mercy of the uh, game itself if it has yeah. battery backup or uh, chip backup. Hopefully, you can uh, transfer those. Hopefully, you can transfer saves. That'd be great. I would love yeah. to use my analog pocket to transfer saves instead of these other yeah. devices that I have. Um, uh, LJWVU says the other analog consoles have been hacked to run ROMs from the SD card, haven't they? Yes. For whatever reason, uh, they they really locked down the pocket, and I was very surprised by that. Yeah. I thought it would be hacked almost immediately, but no, it's been uh, difficult to get it to run ROMs. Um. So this is good. This is this is good news from Analog. I'm glad they're still working on it, and uh, this will definitely yeah. get me to pick up my Analog Pocket again. You want to see yeah. a cool thing that I have right here? Speaking of Game yes. Boys, I made the metal case. This is a video coming out on Thursday. Ooh. Put the little metal case on. Metal it. case. It's got a cool screen. Also, oh, I got I got another cool. This is another cool guy for you. I <laughs> got. I took one of the Pokemon Reds. I put it in a metal yeah. case. Ooh, that's sexy. And I made a Wolf Den one. Ooh. And does it play Tenet? No, no, it does not. <laughs> but this works. This Pokemon, this metal Pokemon cartridge works. Oh wow, that's cool. Also, this this Game Boy Color is in the shape of a pocket. That's cool. Yeah, because Game Boy Colors have like a. They have a butt. They has have a, butt. a very noticeable butt. <laughs> uh, it has a noticeable butt, and some of the shape is is different. I think it's got like a yeah. It's got like a like a like a like a like a bend in it, and and the screen's yeah. a little different. So it looks like a pocket, but it's actually a color. What's the um? What type of screen is it? It's a funny playing IPS screen. Okay. Uh, and it kind of it's kind of a little chintzy. Uh, but it looks beautiful, but it it's a little yeah. finicky. It's a little funny, if you will. Right. Uh, so I have it in this cool little little case that I got when I was in Japan. Anyway, that was show and tell. What's there in the Wolf go. Den case? There's no there's no game in the in the Wolf Den cartridge. It's just empty. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the most played games of 2020. Despite a fulfilling start to the year for the games industry, none of the top played games during 2022's Q1 were released this year. Uh, MPD's executive director and video game industry advisor, Matt Piscatella, shared stats from the MPD group's Player Pulse. The list, which chronologically ranks the top 10 most played games during 2022's Q1, sees games as old as 20 2009's Minecraft and 2013's Grand Theft Auto V still standing as player favorites so as you can see the top the top 10 uh most played games for 2022 in in no order uh minecraft released in 2009 grand theft auto 5 2013 <laughs> the sims 4 2014 fortnite 2017 
Among Us 2018. Oh my god. Animal Crossing New Horizons 2020. Call of Duty Warzone 2020. Madden 22 2021. Call of Duty Vanguard 2021. And NBA 2K 22 2021. I think it's worth noting that uh, the only console exclusive is Animal Crossing. Yes. And I'm shocked that Animal Crossing is still one of the most played games. Yeah. Uh, I'm also shocked that Among Us is. Like, I know it's popular, but uh, also it has a resurgence because there's new mod packs and stuff. Um, Yeah. But I'm shocked that people are still playing it. (laughs) Like, like that many I, people I, are still playing it. I I could have sworn that like the hype for that died down like in twenty twenty one after yeah they they uh, added pis- they added new like roles and stuff yeah so, and it's yeah. on it's on consoles now so yeah 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 uh, Piscatello pointed out that half of the games that made the list were launched before the twenty twenties. Most notably, Elden Ring, which IGN gave a ten to and quickly became the best selling game of the year so far ranked 20th and fell Whoa. short of older games like Rocket League and World of Warcraft. Piscatella accredited the game's surprisingly low placement to the success of Evergreen and live service games, calling, the, calling them gravity wells for player attention, time, and spending. Q1 is typically defined as a period from January to the end of March, so Elden Ring would also have only been released for one month. Uh, Piscatella expanded on this thread by stating that more AAA games should seek to help, should seek the help of services like Game Pass and the new PlayStation Plus, saying that he believes these plans can help get games funded, released, and to help them break through the barriers of the big evergreen titles. Uh, so yeah, who? I'm tr- I'm trying to understand what where they got this information from. It's from the <clears throat> the NPD group uh, and their Players Pulse division, whatever that is. Whatever that means. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Well, the NPD group is that group that chart that uh, charts the sales of video games, right? And I guess Players Pulse is a subsection of that that actually looks at play time. Like they get stats and data from. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, and like actually sees what people are playing. Uh huh. Okay. Sorry, I ran out of disk space again, and the recording stopped. <laughs> oh, Great. I know what it is. I'm dumb. All right, this sucks about Dropbox. Every time okay. I add a new, uh, every time I add a new, uh like like folder it it'll just download it uh-huh. automatically without consulting uh, yeah uh so now i have to piece this together later anyway uh so what are some games i guess elden ring i would have expected to see on here yeah i what think that's else? the big one what, what else is year? what yeah what else do we have honestly this year is kind of <laughs> Yeah. Not much going on here. Well, even still, like Halo and and Forza Horizon Five were like big games last year, and mm-hmm. they're not on this list. Um, True. I'm trying to think of what else. <laughs> Jay Libs says, oh, "Elden Ring, way, way, way overrated." Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be a reason why so many people like it. Yeah. Uh, so, but I, I mean, this is, I just, I find this very interesting because there have been many a great games released, uh, you know, within the past three years, five years even, mm-hmm. but the most played games half of them are by all accounts old right you know and some of them but like really you would thought (laughs) yeah and some of them you would thought like animal crossing among us Fortnite, um even warzone to some extent 
Like you would expect their popularity to die down, you know, now that the, the pandemic is like on its way out. Mm-hmm. But no, they're still just as popular as they have they've always been. And I I guarantee you Madden and NBA 2K will not be on this list again next year. <laughs> those will be replaced by this year's version. Right. Yeah. Uh and Grand Theft Auto goes to show you uh why there hasn't been a new Grand Theft Auto because it's yeah. consistently the most played game every single year yeah so why bother why bother minecraft is incredible i love the fact that minecraft just has had one game and then that's it like there's like dungeons and shit but like minecraft is just minecraft and they just update minecraft and then that's it we need more games like that or like fortnite it's just fortnite and then they just they just add to fortnite i don't need a fortnite 2 fortnite is fine like overwatch should have just been an update overwatch 2 should have just been an update yeah, I think everybody agrees with you, but the problem is Overwatch is owned by uh, Activision and they demand sequels and yes. yearly releases. Otherwise, you get shut down and you can work on Call of Duty. Remember uh, remember Destiny? Destiny was supposed to be a forever game. And then they made, and yeah. then they had their little timeline and then Activision was like, Destiny 2, and they were like, fuck. And then they made Destiny 2. Yeah. And then I got mad and stopped playing the game. There you go. Uh, anyway, uh, what else do we got here? We got Sony it is done with the PlayStation Four. Goodbye. That's it. No more. Just in Throw time in for trash, Will everyone. to want to borrow my PlayStation Four. <laughs> <laughs> Before the show started, I asked Bob if I could borrow his PlayStation Four because I want to do uh, I want to do an experiment of having of ping-ponging back and forth between two PlayStation 4s. So I can finally beat Guardians of the Galaxy and move on with my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Sony has other plans. Sony has revealed that that it's planning to finally wind down the PS4. Uh, First released back in 2013, the PS4 has gone on to become not only one of Sony's most successful consoles, but it's also become one of the top-selling video game platforms ever. Despite this, Sony is now looking to sell the PS5 as its primary hardware, which means the PS4 is naturally coming to an end. Now, thanks to new guidance from Sony, we have an idea of when that will be. Outlined in Sony's latest financial presentation, it it was made clear that games for the F- that games for the PS4 will be gone by 2025. This doesn't mean that legacy PS4 games will no longer be purchasable, but Sony is clearly planning to be done with releasing new titles on the platform by this time. Instead, by 2025, Sony has projected that the majority of its revenue associated with games will stem from the PlayStation 5, with titles on PC and mobile also bringing in some some other half of its income. As a whole, this obviously isn't uh, surprising given that the PS5 will be Sony's main focus in the years to come, Still, it's worth stressing that in this very moment, the PS4 is a platform that Sony is still manufacturing and releasing games for. In fact, this year's biggest PlayStation game, God of War Ragnarok, is still expected to be released on PS4 whenever it does arrive. At some point in the coming years, Sony will likely end up uh, making a bigger announcement related to the PS4 and its official end of life. Uh, As of now, we've been... As we've now been informed, though, this announcement should end up coming before 2025 rolls around, so be sure to prepare accordin- accordingly. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I mean, it makes sense given the timeline, but I, not enough people have PlayStation 5s. Yes. So that's yeah. what kind of doesn't make sense. So... Sony systems usually stick around for a long time. Uh, you know, the, the average video game life cycle is like five years, six years. Yeah. Uh, Sony supports their consoles, their home consoles, for at least ten. Right. Because they're all like the best selling consoles of all time. So, it it makes sense for you know the PlayStation Four to end in twenty twenty five. That's twelve years after it debuted. But like you said there's still a supply ch- a chain problem with the PlayStation 5. Not enough people are getting it, and it's to release games on both systems, which Sony is doing with God of War, like they did with Horizon. Um, is 2025 
the right date to completely stop making PS4 games and PS4s? Or yeah, guess should they 20... keep it going for a little bit longer? I guess 2025 is still pretty far out. Uh, I mean, it's two years. Yeah. Uh, no, three years. Uh, I don't know what year I'm in. Uh, <laughs> three years is probably... Th that makes a lot of sense for the PS4. Uh, yeah. Also, it means by then they plan on having enough PlayStation 5s. I'm sure the iteration yeah. we were talking about earlier is probably going to happen somewhere in the next year or two. So, uh, yeah. Uh, or, or, or 2023 or 2024, I would say. So then by 2025, yeah, get the PlayStation 4s out of here. We don't, we don't need them anymore. Uh, hopefully, yeah. anybody who wants a PlayStation 5 will be able to get it, and that'll support the PlayStation 4 games and stuff. Uh, any new game should be on PlayStation 5 by then. So I guess that makes that makes sense. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I fell for the clickbait uh, and just assumed <laughs> that this just meant the end of the PlayStation 4. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Well, it is coming to an end, but not, not for a while. We, we got we some time. Yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all dying, too. <laughs> just not yeah. anytime soon, hopefully. Um. All right, so yeah, I expect uh, to not play PlayStation Four games soon, except uh, Will's going to be playing mine, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, we got new games for Switch Online. Isn't that exciting, Will? Now, astute fans of this show may know that we usually like to tell you about the free games that you get with the services: Switch Online, PlayStation Plus, Xbox Games of Gold. We like to do that at the top of the show, mm -hmm. but I guess we put this towards the middle or bottom because who fucking cares about these games no these are some terrible games i will say though this uh uh i guess it's congo's caper looks pretty good yeah yeah that doesn't look bad uh so for the snes you get congo's caper and rival turf uh rival turf looks awful <laughs> yeah it does look bad it looks it's like it looks like awful. a random beat -em up it looks bad it looks like like you could tell a good side scrolling beat em up from a bad one, and this just looks like a bad one. This looks like yeah. a generic ass bad side scrolling beat em up. Uh, and on the NES, you get pinball. So, Yay. <laughs> so I saw pinball, and I was like, okay, who gives a shit? Apparently, people love pinball. People love this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know uh, what that's think, about. Uh, uh, I think there's a part in it where you can play as you can play with Mario and Pauline. Yeah, there it is. It's on screen right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's NES pinball. It's made by Nintendo, so it probably has some like cool, wacky features that are exciting. It's not just a pinball table. Yeah. Uh, no, it looked like there was like you could play. You, you're playing poker with pinball and whatever. There's it, it, all different types of like mini yeah. games in it. It looks pretty. It looks pretty cool, but. They've been kind of striking out with the uh, Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm really not excited at all until they release N64 games. Whenever there's an N64 game, then I get a little more excited. Otherwise, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not really interested. Yeah, and it's a shame because this really could have been. It just goes to show you, like how, how much, like I don't even not that Nintendo doesn't care, but like they're not giving it like the same love and attention they gave virtual console right you know uh next we have uh a new new star wars game yay uh respawn entertainment officially unveiled its sequel to star wars jedi fallen order on friday at star wars celebration the sequel star wars jedi survivor will be released on the PS5, Windows PC, and Xbox Series X in 2023, publisher EA announced in a news release. Uh, the first teaser uh, for Jedi Survivor shows the return of Cal Kestis, the Padawan Survivor from Order 1886 from Fallen Order, as well as the Grand Inquisitor and what appears to be a mysterious potential ally in a Bacta tank. Kestis's journey in the Star Wars galaxy is set five years after the events of Fallen Order, uh, with Cal and his wee droid buddy BD-1 still being pursued by the Empire as one of the last remaining Jedi. Jedi Survivor will expand on the series' dynamic combat in new and innovative ways, EA said in a news release, when Cal will learn new skills and grow his connection with the Force. 
Even before completing Fallen Order, our team had a vision for how to carry the adventures of Cal, BD, and the crew for the sequel, as uh, said Stig Asmussen, a, a returning game director from Respawn. Uh, for Jedi Survivor, we were work we were working in lockstep with Lucasfilm Games to build on the legacy of Fallen Order. We are leveraging advanced technology to create more dynamic Jedi combat and cinematic storytelling to expand on Cal's story as he matures and survives during the dark times. We can't wait to share more about the game with the world later this year. I guess I have to beat the first game. I know. Uh, I said the same thing. I didn't realize the colon was where it is in the title. Jedi Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Star Wars Jedi yeah. Fallen Order. Yeah, it's it's a clunky title no matter how you say it. Like, if they called it Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that still makes sense Yeah, as a title. It makes more sense than Jedi Fallen Order. But. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I so... Yeah, I don't really understand this... P- period of star wars <laughs> like this like I, every time they add a new jedi i'm like what the f-? that's kind of why i haven't played this game is because i get like angry whenever there's like they add a new jedi in this period where they're all supposed to be dying and being hunted down well cal and to an extent um what the hell's uh cal and freddie prince jr's character from rebels <laughs> makes sense because they were Padawans at the time. They were still learning, so they weren't full-fledged Jedi. And by the time of their events of their respective stories, they had, you know, actually become Jedi. Because it's 20 years, you know, between Order 66 and, you know, when the Death Star blows up. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of time for, like, their Padawans to, like, grow up and mature in the Force, so to speak. Where, Where were the Padawans? Weren't they all slaughtered? Them were off world. Some of them escaped. You know, it's not it's not as many as you think. Mm-hmm. There's only like, like it's really only like Cal and Caden Jarris. That's his name. Because it's really only like, those. But two. every time they add one, it makes the 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 Obi Wan being the only hope. It makes it less important. Or Luke being the the new hope. It makes it less important every time they add another fucking. Jedi. Well, not necessarily because remember, the Jedi are very big on, like, prophecy and, like, the following of the Chosen One. Mm-hmm. So, like, Luke it, Luke and Leia are still technically the Chosen Ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, Cal Kestis is not going to defeat Darth Vader. We all know that. <laughs> so Okay, but this fucking guy doesn't he... I don't want to spoil it, but doesn't he literally fight Vader? Yes. <laughs> so he like, what? He doesn't, so then, what he doesn't the fuck? Defeat Vader. He doesn't defeat Vader. He doesn't bring balance to the Force. He doesn't redeem Vader at the end. He doesn't do what Luke and Leia are prophesized to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, I mean, look in a New Hope. It's just, it's just blow up the Death Star and it, no, in, in a New Hope, it's just we gotta save Leia, and the only person who could do it is Obi Wan. So like. Right. I don't know if the well, only person could do it is Obi Wan if we got all these other people running around. <laughs> well, Obi Wan is the only one who Leia knows. That's true. That's a good point. Like, remember, there, have you started watching Obi Wan yet? Yes, I, this is very good. Yeah, okay. we don't have to spoil Obi Wan, but I, no, I understand no. what you mean. But I like. I think it makes it very clear that like this isn't really spoiling anything. But like, Obi Wan makes it very clear that like any Jedi who are alive need to be in hiding. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what they need to do. So mm-hmm. if they're not out being idiots, then they're <laughs> out then they're hiding. Yes. So. All right. I'll play the game. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it on my steam deck. There you go. Uh, speaking of games we need to play here's Sonic origins. Yay! Uh, Sonic Origins file sizes for standard and deluxe versions uh, have been revealed. Hold on. Let me scroll down. Uh, article. Deluxe. Digital. Uh, we, we did a whole thing on this whole structure that was all paying ass <laughs> bullshit. 3.8 yeah. gigabytes for the digital deluxe and 3.5 gigabytes with the ordinary release. Yes. Okay. 
or whatever that means. So three to three point five to three point eight gigabytes is what you're looking at for, yes. for Sonic Origins. Uh by comparison, Sonic Mania was was only about three hundred and ninety megabytes. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, there's a lot in this. There's a lot of like yeah. the art and what and whatnot. And it's and it's and, friggin' like five games. <laughs> yeah, and it's like completely like it's upscaled and like there's a lot of features and stuff mm-hmm. and whatnot. But for comparison, Sonic Forces Sonic Forces and Sonic Colors Ultimate on Switch were both around like eight gigs. <laughs> S- Switch games are small. Yeah. They're real, uh, like like Nintendo ones are compressed all shit. So yeah. that kind of makes sense. Uh, on this note of Sonic, we also have gameplay reveal for Frontier. Yes. Uh, IGN's IGN has its first as the first glimpse of gameplay for Sonic Frontiers, um, and starting tomorrow, there's going to be IGN will have exclusive like sneak peeks and previews of Sonic Frontiers as part of their IGN first uh, series. Did I just see a glitch? <laughs> no. I think I saw I've a glitch. Like, the... Oh, it's times. it's like a speed boost. Okay, it looked like a glitch. Yeah. This looks yeah. like Death Stranding, does it not? <laughs> it looks like Sonic Death Stranding. I'll tell you what, if Sonic was in Death Stranding, it, the game would have been over in two seconds. Yeah. Death Stranding I mean, with a I'll... little bit of Horizon because of the, the weird robot yeah. guys. I'll give it this. It does look different. It looks a lot different. Even from this like short gameplay footage, it looks a lot different than the Sonic games we've gotten for the last like 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're trying something radically new with this series, which could be a good thing. Could be the worst thing. Uh, I'm I'm interested. I will play it. Yeah. I'm I'm actually yes. this yeah. this this looks more promising. Uh, that robot at the end looks like something from Horizon. Yeah. Uh, I'm still skeptical because it's Sonic, but I think that this is a very good opportunity for them to uh, not screw it up. I do yes. think that 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 they that they might have something good here. Uh, I'm hopeful, yeah. but uh, cautiously uh, optimistic. Cautiously optimistic is the word I should use. Yeah. Uh, I also saw uh. Because of Sonic Frontiers, everyone is calling it uh, Sonic Breath of the Wild. Breath yes. of the Wild was trending on Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, also, we'll see. We'll have saw... more on this coming weeks. Yes. Oh, also, Hard Drive, the, the, the video game version of The Onion, was trending. Yes. Because they were memeing on Elon Musk and they had a back and forth. Yes. Who, let's be honest deserves it <laughs> and it's Scott lucky the... he doesn't own tw- he was, we're lucky he doesn't own twitter yet because hard times would have been hard drive would have been wiped just, off the just wiped the off site. yeah scott the sloth thanks for the gifted sub uh hey speaking of twitter it's time for there you go there you go Uh, this one is really stupid. I literally just pulled it to so just just now. Uh, boyfriend, when you're mad at him, pulls out one of these and pretends to sadly leave like a 1940s cartoon character, and it's a stick with a with a like a <laughs> like a like a what do you like a handkerchief ball I, I, of his like stuff a, at the end? Yeah, what that, that's, that's called something. It's like a hobo something. A hobo stick. Yeah, hobo stick. That's it. You you should you should get one of these and put it in the closet. And next time you I yells at you, just go. That's it. I've had enough. <laughs> I know what I have to do now. I'm sorry, honey. I gotta go. <laughs> Don't tempt me because I 100 percent would. <laughs> hobo bindle. That's it. Yes, a hobo bindle. Uh, everybody should have one of those in their closets for the gag, for the goof. Did you? Did you did you see Inventing Anna on Netflix? Probably not. Hell no. Okay, I I I started doing an impression of the 
of the character from an Anna Delvey because she's got this really weird voice because it annoyed my wife. <laughs> and I made the mistake of doing it in front of my coworkers at work. And now, like, they ask me to do it all the time. Oh, no, you made a mistake. You did a yeah. funny thing in front of coworkers. Now they want you to do thing. the funny thing all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's really easy to do. You just touch your glasses like this and just go, you don't understand. You're so basic. I have a vision. I'm going to change the world. Run my credit card again. You, you know what I saw? I saw um, uh, the guy from Always Sunny. What, what the hell is his name? The, the Not Matt. Charlie. Dennis. Not Dennis. The other one. Danny DeVito. <laughs> no. <laughs> he did he doing an impression of the woman from Law and Order or something. Yeah. And uh, they, had the, they had it side by side. And uh-huh. it's literally exactly the, the impression is is exact to the point where they put the waveforms on top of each other, <laughs> and it's almost <laughs> perfect. That's that's good. Uh, Everyone's saying it's Mac. Is it Mac? Who's who's who's, who's the one who got fat? Because it's not him. That's Mac. Oh, uh, it's not. It's Dennis. Then it's Dennis. Okay. Uh. It was very funny. Anyway, let's do an unboxing. Okay. Show me what you got. I got a bad camera angle. <laughs> I got this right here, which is from 8 Bit Do. Ooh. Xbox controllers. Nice. Uh, they came to my apartment, so it- which is a little concerning because I don't remember <laughs> giving them my apartment address. So, all right. So these are the eight bit do Xbox controllers. I'm They're wired. The okay. Oh, one's one's pink. Yeah, one's pink, and I'm, that's the oh. one I'm most interested in because they both look white on this camera. Uh, sorry about it. Sorry. This is the pink one. No, this yeah, it's like an all. It's it's like a it's okay. It's very yeah, pastel now pink. Now I see it. Um. So this is uh, it's wired. It's designed for Xbox. Can you use it on PC as well? Uh, I assume so. Okay. Uh, it doesn't say. I mean, it, you have to be able to. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft X. Oh, it's a trademark. <laughs> Available at Microsoft Store apps. Oh, no, the Ultimate Software. What the fuck? Where's the... Designed for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Windows 10 and 11. Okay. So why I like, if I'm going to be playing on a computer, Xbox controllers are good because they work with almost everything. And yeah. wired is great. I yes. prefer wired if I'm going to use a computer. Um, It has a weird, like, sandy texture. Oh, the back? Oh, it's the back. The back has, like, the... It's like textured, kind of like an Xbox controller, but it feels yeah. really harsh. And the front is a little sandy, but it's not as textured, but it's still a little sandy and weird. Okay. Uh, the, I, I do not like these triggers. Um, the shoulder buttons are really thick. Uh-huh. The back ones feel exactly like a Pro, can, uh, an 8-Bit Do Pro 2. Thumbsticks feel pretty good. I can't get. I love having thumbsticks that have the metal ring around them. This, oh, I, feel, yeah. I feel like the sandy texture of of the case is getting in the way of this right now. That that would probably wear down over time. Otherwise, it just feels like a good controller. I love this D pad compared to the regular Xbox D pad. Yeah. Uh, here is my my pink Xbox controller for comparison. That is way pinker. <laughs> Um, and here is an 8-Bit Do Pro 2 for comparison. Oh, it's got the same D-pad. There you go. It's got the same D-pad. Oh, that's wow. sick. It just, you know, it's on the bottom. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So this, I guess, uh, if you want a controller to play games on the computer, this is a pretty good option uh, because... It's just an Xbox controller with the good D-pad. So if you like, yeah. Oh, and it has triggers on the back too. Uh, the the like R three and L three. Yeah. So I guess if you want, if you're like, if you want a controller to play like 
uh, shooters like Warzone and Halo and stuff, but then you also might want to futz around with a nice D-pad. This is not a bad option. Yeah. It's uh, up for pre-order now on Amazon. It is, says it'll ship on June 6th, so next week, and it is currently $45. God, there better not be an embargo. <laughs> I tell them now to friggin' put a note in there if there's an embargo. And I and remember, this was an unsolicited. <laughs> this was unsolicited. Well, I did I not ask for this. They just sent it to my apartment. <laughs> it's it's up for pre-order now. <laughs> that doesn't mean there's no embargo. Anybody see a review yet? Am I gonna get in trouble? Don't don't, t don't tell anybody. Anyway, uh, eh. All right, now we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. We will start by answering some comments left on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. I don't see a note. I'm not, um, it's not my problem. I've yeah. already seen a review of it. You're fine. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's go to last week's uh comments we got the the glow cloud who says i want to know why random people on the internet are better at developing emulators than game companies are i wish i knew i think that a lot of oh wait game companies like nintendo and sega i guess is what you mean and sony yeah so i they're sometimes better yeah i'll yeah. say I'll, I'll say that they're sometimes better they're not always better. Um, I think what helps is that there's billions of people in the world. <laughs> and there's only a few hundred at some of these game companies. So, yeah. so I, having the hive mind of all of these retro enthusiasts being behind emulator development, is it kind of helps. I, I think another thing, too, is is passion for it yeah because like the people who make emulators at home like they are freaking passionate about retro gaming and like game preservation and just being able to play games wherever and whenever whereas at nintendo and sega and sony and microsoft and whatnot that passion just isn't there for the old stuff because they are focused on the latest and greatest always right. all the time uh i think Modern Vintage Gamer said it like Sony has the money and the people to make a working PlayStation 3 emulator on the PS5 like they can do it and they can do it better than anybody has tried in the years since the PS3 came out, but they won't because they would rather focus on what's new rather than what's old. Yeah, uh. But then you have companies like Nintendo who do make emulators, and sometimes it it falls short. I I think that Nintendo does things better in some aspects, but then there's things like you know like the water and the awkward of time that they yeah. totally fucked up on. Which to be fair though was really hard for for uh, for the community to develop too. Like like we f yeah. the community figured it out eventually, but you know Nintendo was doing it all from the ground up. So. Uh, it's it's hard. Um. Anyway, M two I J or M twenty one J. I don't know. Take a shot every time you hear weird slash wacky. <laughs> what was what was even the topic last week? Uh, uh, we we spent like three hours trying to figure out Sony's new PlayStation right. Plus tiers that they then rolled back anyway. We probably should have talked about yeah. that. Like yeah. the next day, they were like, by the way, none of that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you love to hear it. Nolan Miller says, the more we keep talking about PlayStation subscription model, the less I understand. Hey, man, I'm right there with you. I was getting yeah. in the hole. And guess what? It didn't matter anyway. They rolled it back. Yep. Nothing matters. Nope. El Comanche says, oh my God, LOL. I love Bob. He is so fucking loud and blunt. Love it. What did I do? everything uh, i, I think that's when you like started 
started low and like screamed into the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Melon says, okay, okay, so wait. So you're saying that if I already have a PlayStation Plus subscription, have a month remaining, have previously stacked it, and want to upgrade to premium, then that means I can play the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV before playing Metroid Dread. You fuck. You had me in the first half there. <laughs> yes, no. you are correct, Melon. That is how it works. No, you have to watch Boss Baby first. It's a prerequisite. Yeah. Chris Best says a better example of the upgrade issue is if you stocked up PS Plus for two years, you can't just upgrade to premium for a month if you wanted. You have to pay the upgrade fee for two years. You can't do anything. That We eventually got there. We eventually got there, but then also it doesn't, that's not how it works. <laughs> We got there, uh, and then the next day, a PlayStation was like, by the way, that's a mistake. That's not how it's going to work. Yeah, I, ha I have the tweet. Due to a technical error, players in Asia who have previously purchased a PlayStation Plus membership at discount have been incorrectly charged for their upgrade price. This error has been fixed, and impacted players will receive a credit. We thank you for your patience. Yeah, so uh, it was a mistake. Yeah. So... Uh, don't worry, we freaked out for a half an hour for no reason. Oh, it was more than half an hour. Uh, fries and a shake says, Bob, what mic do you use? This is a Shure SM7B, and so is Will's. Yep. They're both running through a cloud lifter. You have a cloud lifter, right? Uh, the Rubik's 22. Oh, you USB don't have, I don't think you have a cloud lifter. No. It's a blue box you plug it into. Uh, it just makes it louder. Okay. Uh, anyway, what gaming chair do you use, Bob? You can type exclamation point chair. This is, we're both using the Secret Labs Batman chair. Yes. Uh. Very nice chair. They make a else? Joker chair now. Ooh. Which I don't want, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> they have Pokemon chairs, but I don't think they ship in America. Ah, it's whack. Uh, a new trailer is dropping tomorrow for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in the next generation of Pokemon I really am not excited at all for the new Pokemon I don't think it's going to be any good I'll take a look at it you know but I don't know if I would get it I'll watch it, the know? trailer but I was yeah. so underwhelmed with the last trailer yeah how much older is Will two years baby where is the Morb chair? Well, how do you feel about this Morbius uh, hype? I really need to see this movie now. I need to know, like, I need to be a part of this conversation. <laughs> You're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> I I know. I, well, I'm either going to be very disappointed or I'm going to be, I, I'm going to love just how awful it is. Have you guys seen the new season of Stranger Things? No, I, no. I'm not interested. And I'm mad because... First of all, it's the first. It's only the first half of the season, which pisses me off when Netflix does that. Second of all, all the episodes are significantly longer than they have been. Like the first episode is an hour and a half, and then the second half of the season, it's going to be like feature length episodes. And three, Stranger Things, Obi Wan, and Shorzy all debuted on the same day, and what I had to make a choice. What the hell was that last thing you just said? Shorzy, you what know that show Letter Kenny that? that I really like? Yes. It's a spinoff of that about the hockey player uh, from that uh... show. I made my choice. I watched Obi-Wan, and then we watched Shorzy because it's only six episodes, and they're half an hour each, and it was fucking hysterical. So I will watch Stranger Things when I have the time. Not on your time, Netflix. I'm in control. Did you buy the expensive coffee machine? No. Uh, it's going to be a long time, so I'm not going to buy it till after November. And it'll probably take a while to get to me too. So, no, yeah. I'm not. I didn't buy it. Yet. Uh, uh, I saw one. Will, I'm glad that you and I share the same distaste for HBO Max leaving multi part movies as separate instead of combining them. So, this, uh, I forgot who it was. I, I don't really understand that. on Twitter. So sometimes, but well, they've done this, you know, those DC animated films that they do mm -hmm. occasionally, they've done it where like some of the films, like the Dark Knight Returns is the 
the premiere example. They released it in two parts originally. So part mm-hmm. one came out on DVD first, and a few months later they released part two. And then like a year or so after that, they released it in one combined uh, disc. They like put it all on one disc and they released it as a single film, which I should have done in the first place, but I digress. On HBO Max, they don't have the combined film up. They only have it up in parts. And there's a couple of other the DC animated films that are like that. And that is beyond stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> I don't understand why they don't just put the whole movie up right. rather than make you watch it in two parts. You know, if if they could put up the ultimate cut of Batman vs. Superman and not the theatrical version, which is the same fucking movie, you know, I don't understand why they don't give you the definitive edition of the animated films. I think that's kind of cool to be able to break it up in two parts because sometimes the movie's too long and I want to I wanna watch it the rest of it the next day, you know? Well, yes, but I don't know if you know this, but HBO Max, much like many streaming services, have this feature where you can stop the movie and it remembers <laughs> where you left off. And it's there on the front page. Continue watching. Mm. So. They should just make a playlist. Make a playlist feature. Just roll yeah. it into the second one. But no. <laughs> you know, I when I started Obi-Wan, you know, it said a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And then it said skip yeah. preview. And I tried to take a screenshot because I thought that was funny. Like, why would I want to skip? the yeah. It's not the preview. Skip the recap. I was like, no, I need yeah. a recap. It's been 20-something years. I need a recap. And uh, I took a screenshot, and the whole screen was black because it knew I was taking a screenshot. Really? No. Yeah. Oh. It was spooky. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you guys were mystified by that NPD survey, but what games ha- from this year have you played, finished, or enjoyed the most? Wordle. <laughs> yeah. I'm embarrassed by how much I play that game. Same. Uh, uh, okay, so what have I played? Oh, Valorant. I've been playing a fuck ton of Valorant. I started playing Quake on Switch. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, you know, first of all, I'm reminded of how good that game is. But I'm also reminded of, like, how just how fast that game is. That yeah, game is, like, fast. It, like, the levels are short. So, like, you can just pick it up and go through a level in quick burst. It's great. Uh, plug a mouse and keyboard into your Switch. Uh, no, it, it works. It just works. <laughs> I know. I know it works, but I don't know. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Quirtle, you're make you're. This is not a thing. Oh God, no, that's a no, thing. It's like I'm four, go, it's go four away. Wordles at once. Go away. Uh, what other games have I played? Not much. I, I really just. Valorant yeah. is the most played probably this year. Um, besides, you know, I also like Mario Maker and stuff. Uh, anyway, guys, I think we're done. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always uh, put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective platforms. Uh, I will... I don't know if I could stream Thursday. I'll try my best, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Um, uh, otherwise, I'll definitely have a video. Well, actually, I don't know. I'll have a video done by Thursday, but I have a sponsor that usually takes a while to approve stuff. Um, Echo, thanks for the raid, but we're we're stopping the stream right now. <laughs> We're going to now raid someone else. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Uh, go watch AJ. He's playing Smash. Uh, and then we will see you later. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bye.